At OceanX, our mission is to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. But we can't do it alone. Scientists, divers, explorers, volunteers, and ocean lovers of all kinds are working to understand and protect the ocean in their own communities and around the world. These are their stories. Here on Svalbard, roughly 60% of land is covered by glaciers. For the last 60 years or more, the glaciers have been getting thinner, losing mass, and receding. We're going in the wrong direction. I'm Aga Novak. I work at the University Center of Svalbard as a researcher and adjunct associate professor in polar hydrology. When I was little, I wanted to be a pirate. And I think I wanted to be a pirate because I wanted to explore the world. Working in Svalbard gives me that freedom and exploration. Everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, there's something new to discover. Glaciers, you have to think about them as a storage for fresh water. That's the main influence they have on the system. It's a very valuable resource that we have to keep an eye on. When you're thinking about glaciers and climate change, you have to look at the size of the glaciers. Large glaciers, like the one behind me, um, is going to be responding to climate change much slower than smaller glaciers. The smaller glaciers, they already lost so much mass and retreated so much that they started producing less and less fresh water every year for the past 10 years. And this is something new that we've discovered just this year by looking at 50 years of uh, data collected by all the researchers around Svalbard. Come on, come on. Living on Svalbard, we depend on the glacial melt for uh, drinking water supply. What we are looking at right now is winter water supply for the town. And at the end of this valley, there is a medium-sized cold base glacier called Bokebren. And that glacier melts um, throughout the summer. And then all of that melt is being delivered into the lake. And it's actually really nice quality water because it comes from ice melt. Every glacier around in Svalbard has been receding massively. Last year we had uh, a period when we had over 21 degrees Celsius for a week and I could see a massive influence on the thickness of the glacier and the glacier melt. So for example, last year the glacier uh, melted three times as much as in uh, 2019 and twice as much as in 2018. If we lose the glacier, we're losing water supply. I mean, this is a really... It's not something that's going to happen right away, right? But it's something that is going to happen. Svalbard is special. And it's special because it warms up to six times faster than the rest of the world. And uh, that means the predictions in uh, change in air temperature are much higher. So we are right here. This is the Longibian. And you can see two glaciers. And uh, this glacier changed a lot through the last years. So you can see, since the 1930s, it retreated, you'll see, all the way to the moraines there. And now, 50, 60 years later, we are further, much further in. It lost about 40% of the mass. So it's a very short amount of time and a lot of loss. And this is happening to all the cold base glaciers in Svalbard. Big part of, um, of Svalbard is covered by small glaciers. Those are the ones who already passed the point of no return. And unless something dramatic happens, um, I don't see those glaciers recovering. Last year we had that period of time when we had over 20 degrees Celsius in July. And look at this sediment load. All that, about 40-50 centimeters, was deposited during one week only 
of that increased meltwater due to that um, heat wave in Longyearbyen. That's just crazy. The water at that time was four times more discharged than it usually has. So you see all sorts of problems, loads of sediments being transported into the sea. And of course you have problems for, for the town as well, because there's loads of erosion going on to the point where the buildings are being um, in danger. If we start doing something about the climate right now, then we might still save it. But we need to start acting right now. Honestly, I am really frustrated and angry at people who maybe not deny climate change, but decide to not see it or ignore it, or say, oh, it doesn't concern us. And here we are living in this fantastic place and seeing it changes so quickly and dramatically. So part of our efforts is to shout as much as possible how massive the changes are and how quickly they happen and maybe make people realize that this concerns them too. It's all connected. We are living in, on one planet um, and we cannot ignore that. Changes in one place will affect anywhere else. Thank <laughs> you.